VCHAR Stink is pleased to present a video tutorial for the open source electronic design suite, GITA. Here is a list of the steps we will be taking you through, and we have visuals for each item. We'll take a look at the schematic we plan to use for this project. You'll see that it's drawn with four individual logic gates, which in fact actually live on one 14-pin chip. This is going to create some interesting challenges for us, but we'll show you how to fix the problems that this type of drawing is going to create. When you start GSHEM, it opens with a disclaimer. The default background is black, and you can change that to a light color scheme. The component add tool looks like a plug. It's at the top, right in the middle. Let's go back to our schematic you must make a list of all the components that you are going to need and also the footprints associated with each component. In other words, the physical size. Now, if you click on the Component Add tool, the window opens up. These are drop-down menus. If you click on an arrow, the components scroll down. If you click on an individual symbol, it appears in the preview window. Click on OK. Left mouse button drops the component in the drawing area. Left mouse button continues to drop. You can stop this action by pressing Escape. Brings you back to the component selector window. If you click on Close, you are returned to the drawing area. Now we're going to open a file browser as a super user. We have to do this because all the underlying resources for GITA are owned by root. So to make changes to symbols, footprints, you have to be logged in as a super user. So for the symbols, you navigate to user, share, GITA, symbol, click on the analog folder, then click on the symbol for npn-1. It will open with gshem in symbol editor mode. If you click on an individual pin, it is selected. It turns red with grip bars at each end. Right mouse button drops down a menu. Click on edit. It opens the attribute window. In the attribute window, you must have a pin number, a reference designation, and a footprint. Pin number and pin sequence must have the same value. This particular symbol has a pin number of C. That is wrong. Double click where the C is. A box will open up. You can backspace and type in pin number 1. Make sure pin number is visible. You also want to make pin label collector visible. The C will appear right on top of the 1. Those are text elements. By zooming in, you can select the text element and move it. Now you have to do this with every pin on every component. This particular pin doesn't even have a pin number. So you have to go down to the Add Attribute box, select Pin Number, type in the value, in which case, in this case, it is 3, and then click on the Add button. Make it visible. Again, you have to do this for every component. Every pin number must be visible because that's what you're going to use to check your net list against the schematic. You're going to print out the schematic. Now, with these visuals, you'll see that as I select individual components, the pin numbers are already visible. That's because before we started this project, we went in and edited a lot of the components. And so we already made those pin numbers visible. With your copy, those pin numbers are probably not visible. So you have to go in as a super user and edit the symbol file as a super user because otherwise you're not going to be able to do a save. So now in our drawing area, we start dropping in our individual components, two diodes, no, one diode, 
two capacitors. Now, uh, with the attributes associated with each component, it is very important that you have as a minimum reference designator, R1, R2, etc. The footprint, which tells the software how much space it takes up on a board, and other information which is useful. For resistors, you want to have the value and make that visible. Now, to deal with the 7400 chip, the logic gates, we're going to take a look at what, it, what symbols are available. And what we're going to do is select the symbol as used by the original author, which is a logic gate with three pins attached. So we tick the most simple ones, 7400-1 symbol. And we're going to drop that into our drawing four times. Now, obviously, we're going to have to make some changes because we can't have those four gates with pin 1, 2, and 3. That's not correct. I want to add some additional information that you must know about the attributes. The attributes must not contain any special characters, and they must not contain any spaces. R space 1 is not acceptable. OK, now we're going to start dealing with the footprint issue. As the super user in the file browser, we're going to go into the PCB folder, user share PCB new lib, two pin through hole packages. And we're going to generate PNG pictures for these particular footprint files. So if you open up a footprint file with PCB designer, we'll see the image of what the component looks like. And what you want to do is export that image as a PNG so that you can see what the footprint is. Now, uh, also, we've noticed that some of these footprint files in some of these folders do not end in .fp. That is an error. The software cannot recognize a file as being a footprint file unless it ends in a .fp. If you find any, you must rename it. Make sure it ends in .fp. So now we've exported this quarter watt resistor as a PNG, and we have a picture of it. And it appears next to the footprint. And we return to our drawing. Click on a component, edit. And the attribute window opens up. And this is the first resistor that we dropped. We're going to add an attribute, footprint. And we're going to type in the name of the file without the .fp extension. And we click on the Add button. So now we have a proper footprint to go with the first resistor. Now, the simplest way to pass this information to the other resistors is just to erase them. Copy this one updated resistor into the buffer, and then paste from the buffer six times. As you can see, there's five buffers. We return to our drawing. And now we can start moving some of our components around. You select component, it turns red, hold down the left mouse button, and move the component. Also with the selector tool, if you zoom in real close, you can select just a text, not the entire component, and use the rotation tool to make it more readable. You have to be very careful with the selector tool because sometimes it grabs something that's not really expected. I want to emphasize at this time that the keyboard commands for the PCB designer and the schematic designer are not the same. You must be very careful because a typo can wreck an awful lot of work. So now we're going to start defining our resistors. This is no longer R question mark. It's now R6. And we're going to add the value of the resistor in the add attribute box. And we have to check off visible, yes, name, uncheck that. You don't want the name value. This concludes the first segment of our four-part tutorial, which is about 40 minutes long. We will now move on to clip B.